Today, we're going to check out the Ilugu Saturn IV Ultra. See you guys inside. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Ilugu Saturn IV Ultra, one of the newest additions to my shop. Now, for a long time, I haven't had an Ilugu printer in my shop except for the Saturn S. I liked my Saturn S. It was a good, reliable, simple printer. Well, this is the bigger brother with a lot of new added features and a lot of new bells and whistles. We're going to talk about those, kind of the first look. Then normally you guys would see me take this out of the box. Well, yeah, I've already taken it out of the box. Uh, excited schoolboy, because this printer has a lot of cool options. And a lot of cool printers are out there right now that are in great competition with it. But this machine kind of stood out a little bit to me. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So before we dive into that, if you're new here, make sure you hit that sub button. Help us get to that wonderful first goal of 10,000 and start moving even further beyond that. Two, hit that like button. It does help us out. If you've watched the rest of this content and you enjoy it, please hit that like button. And also, if you have any questions about 3D printing, model building, any of that fun stuff, hit us up in the comments down below or feel free to shoot me an email. So let's talk about this printer. So looking at this printer, there's a few things that immediately stand out to me. There are a lot of cool features on this machine. 10 inch build plate, LCD touchscreen, Wi-Fi built in, auto leveling, and a lot of cool features that come with the machine that some of that stuff we're gonna have to test out once I actually get it out to the shop. And that'll be probably video number two. But a lot of good features with this machine that are very big pros. One of the things I hate is taking the lid, having to lift the lid all the way off, set it somewhere in my shop, to get in and get my print out and then put the lid back on. And a lot of times I wind up getting resin on the lid. I wind up having a lot of problems doing that. This is one of the changes that I think is really good that 3D resin 3D printing is doing. That is the simple lift cover. Just flip it up. It stays on the machine, a lot less chances of breaking it or having to have space for it or different things like that that can cause problems. So the flip up is a big pro to me. That it fits into a shelf space. I know how much space I have to have. I don't need a ton of excess space that wastes time and space to be able to open my printer. So big pro with that one. Really nice resin vat, auto leveling. One of the changes that I'm unsure of and that I'm going to kind of work with is the release lever for the build plate. Instead of screws, it is a release plate. And you can definitely see a big change in the build plate. And even in the patterning and the feel of the build plate is very much been updated and grown over time. Now I'm gonna give that a good isopropyl alcohol wipe down before I use it because I touched it with my hand. And all you do is press that lever, lock it into place. I'm curious over time how that's gonna impact. I've got a built-in camera, which is really cool because it's an AI camera to look for problems. But also, it, I think if I remember correctly from the app, I can time-lapse now which is great and gonna be cool stuff for you guys on the channel with some cool shorts of time-lapsing. But a lot of nice robust features and a very nice compact machine. The lid is one of the things that makes it even more compact. Now granted, I've gotta have about three or four inches away from the wall, but guess what? All my fans are back here. I want that room. So all in all, the machine gives a great room for growth. We lose some of the space inside, but that's not a big deal, because honestly, this machine is so compact, and some of the cool features that it gives, like Illigu now supplies a drip tray that I can now put in here, screw down, and then remove my plate and not have to worry about dripping on the machine, because honestly, you don't want to get resin on the machine. That's bad. So, cool feature added is these drip trays. Uh, not anyone else I've seen or gotten printers from supplies these anymore. And some of the goodies in the box, of course, you want to wear a mask. When you're draining your vat, you want funnel filters. Great thing to have. A supply of, rent, of Allen wrenches because the vat doesn't come with these bolts in. It comes bolted in with actual bolts. A very good vat putty knife. A very good build plate removal knife. That's actually a really nice knife and looks rather sharp. USB drive with all your drivers and all that fun stuff in here. And also a, I think this is a one month Shinto Box Pro, which is what I use. I'm using a new beta version, which a video will be coming on that here pretty soon. And then you've got your power cord. 
USB-based power cord. I do like these and I dislike these, these brick power supplies. Um, it is nice just having the single cord being able to plug in and go. I don't have to worry about this box falling off or anything like that and causing a problem. But all in all, nice little power supply, nice clean looking machine. I love the look of the machine. Um, Cause we're gonna also be doing a video on the Mars Ultra 5. But all in all, I'm excited to test this machine out. I've been actually itching to make this video because I want to get it out into the workshop. But overall, the initial look of the machine is pretty, pretty sleek, pretty nice. And I'm kind of hoping it really does live up to the specs that it gives. Uh, that 12K resolution looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. But you know what? You're probably tired of hearing me ramble on and talk about all the good things about this machine. Let's do the fun part. Let's get this machine powered on and take a look at it and see how she sounds. I've got it plugged in. I've got the Wi-Fi antenna installed. I got the thumb drive in. Let's turn her on for the first time. So one of the things you got to keep in mind when you're doing resin printing, and I'm this is early November when I'm creating this video. And this guy was running for about four hundred dollars when I purchased when it was purchased. It's a really nice looking machine. Good price point for a ten inch machine with a lot of the AI features that it has. Actually, now it's running at self-diagnostics. So this is one thing I think is really good about these 3D printers is it has its basic diagnostics, but it has beeps, which I dislike. But let's take a look here. Yep, as it's going through, it's going through its power on diagnostics. Each beeps means we're moving through a step. It's gonna go through and it's gonna check calibration and it's gonna take make sure the LCD and everything and everything is running correctly. So it'll go through a whole spool of things and then we're going to our main display. Now, the cool thing about this is Wi-Fi capable machine, go to settings, go to Wi-Fi, refresh, and it should pick up my Wi-Fi. There it is. Now I'm gonna stop the video for a second. I'm gonna put in my password, be right back. All right, I just connected it to my Wi-Fi, got it all hooked up, we are now connected. So I'm gonna go back. And guess what? As always, firmware upgrade available. Upgrade. So it's gonna go through its first firmware upgrade. This is always a good thing to get it to do. Always wanna be on the best firmware for the machine. And usually that is the newest one where they take out problems. That's one of the things great about over the older machines. These machines check for the firmware online themselves. Uh, one of the most impressive things. So I'm gonna let this guy do its firmware upgrade. It's gonna tell me to turn the machine off and turn it back on. We'll catch up when that machine's back on. All right, guys, I just rebooted it from its firmware upgrade. In reality, real life, this took about eight minutes for it to do its firmware upgrade, downloading it from the internet and installing it itself. Really nice feature. We're now up on the boot up from that. Again, the Saturn IV Ultra, it's got a lot of nice features that I really like about it for this size of printer. Now, you know, in competition, there's the Anycubic M5S Pro and different M printers like that where They've thought this one through quite a bit, especially with the, the tilt lid is, sets it apart from the Anycubic machine, uh, the M5, the camera, which I need to get rid of, get that out of there, really sets it out. We've got self-leveling, which a lot of printers have. Everything is greased, everything's ready to go. I really like the class where I'm not having to adjust lead screws. I have in the past, forgotten to tighten them and ran a print job and wound up with a big mess. So that is one feature that I really like. We got the lens cap off. Never, never forget to take the lens cap off. It, that happens a lot. Uh, <laughs> but there's just a lot of nice features in here. Um, I'm not going to use it for rapid printing. I'm going to use it with a probably frozen 8K resin, resin and do some really nice just standard speed printing that is one of the things that these printers have once this boots up i'll show you guys is there is a speed mode and a standard mode um, i'll be running this nine times out of ten in standard mode just to kind of print one of the other things that i do highly recommend with any resin printer a screen protector for the lcd i don't know how many times people have said hey how do i get resin off my lcd well if you put a screen protector on you would have had a $5 piece of plastic wasted versus possibly a $150 LCD that you're gonna wind up possibly replacing because the alcohol and stuff to try to get it off of there is probably going to damage it. So try to avoid that where you can. It's got a nice resin vat. I'm 
Very nice, cleanly set up. All right, we are back up and running, and I'm gonna skip the language. We're gonna go with my Wi-Fi and skip. I'm going to name this one. I'm gonna name my machine this time. It didn't let me last time. This is a Ultra, or Sat I'm gonna name this Saturn IV. So come back once I've done that. All right, so I've named it. Now it's gonna go through its self-test again. Now I did take the vat off, just kind of show you guys. Nice 10 inch vat, nice deep vat, which is actually really nice. Um, but the max fill is only about halfway down because if you look at the build plate, very different design um, and do not overfill it a max. If you are gonna fit, put minimum amount of resin, you wanna put a third of the bay needs to be filled, minimum. So then we've got the auto leveling and just for fun, we're gonna go through and just, oh, here's the print mode I was talking about in settings. I'm gonna use standard, there is speed. I don't wanna use speed. I'm gonna go to tools and we're gonna do an LCD test. We're gonna do the grid and make sure everything looks good. Everything looks fantastic. So I'm gonna stop that. There's the Illigoo one showing me the Illigoo technology. Everything looks great. So that has me very happy. Tank cleaning mode, which is very good. There's an emergency stop option as well, which is really nice. When putting the vat in, always put the max to the back. It slips right in and in go your lead screws and you're ready to rock. But again, I would put that, that LCD protector on there just to be on the safe side. So hopefully you guys have found this video informative. We will have another video with some prints and probably taking a closer detailed look at the app and different things to kind of show this one off. What I may do is do a similar video to this on the Mars Ultra 5 and then do the app all in one video and show you guys kind of the cool features of those two printers. So thank you guys. If you liked what you saw, make sure you hit that like button. If you've got questions, hit them down in the comments. And of course, if you haven't, please hit that subscribe button and help us out and help us grow. So thank you guys. See you in the next video.